All right, so let's look at um, for loops. Um, again, control flow managed by while loops and for loops, and I've already covered while loops in the prior video. So for loops, basically it iterates over a sequence. Um, that sequence can be ranges, it can be items in array, it can be a, you know, key and value pairs in a dictionary, it could be characters in a string, you know, um, or it could be whatever you need to iterate that requires a sequence. All right, so let's go ahead and jump in. We're going to cover for in loops first. Basically what for in loops, um, I'm just gonna do something really simple to kind of see how it behaves. Um, so again, really simple, we're gonna go for, and then we're gonna look at, we're gonna create a kind of a placeholder and we're going to call it index. And then we do in. And let's do our sequence. And let's um, do a sequence between 1 and 5. So again, we have the closed um, range operator. <laughs> and then we put in our brackets. And let's print out something else. Um, well, let's print out something so that every time the for loop iterates, it will output something so we can see what it is. All right, so let's do string interpolation and bring an in index. And uh, let's times index by uh, three. We'll say it's equal to, and then we'll do some uh, multiplication inside string interpolation, little thing here. Okay, so we see that it does output five times down here, and you can actually see that the um, <clears throat> the calculation is actually correct. We see that it goes from one to five, and then does our little print statement five times. So there you go, that's a really simple um, way, or just, I just wanted to show you a really simplified example of a for in loop. So let's get a little more complicated. Well, not really complicated, but let's add a little bit of flavor to this. So say if you you wanted to create a calculation that, you know, the only thing you really need is the answer. You don't need to know how many times it goes in. The only thing you want to do is set it and let it do its thing. So let's um, create a for in loop that calculates powers. So for in loop for calculating um, powers. All right, so to calculate a power, we need to know the base. So we are gonna go ahead and create a base. And let's, um, we'll, we'll, we'll let it uh, guess. <laughs> what, let, let, let's let have, let, let's have it infer what, um, what the value is. And then we need to create an exponent. Again, we're inferring what the type is. Let's do two. And then we need to output our answer. So we are going to output answer. Uh, equals one, and the reason why I'm doing equals one is because the math requires us to multiply the answer by the base, and if you multiply by zero, it's going to fudge everything up. So there we go. We have our variables and our constant, and now let's create our for in loop. So we do it for now instead of creating a placeholder variable, what we're going to do is actually do an underscore and. Basically, it just tells a for in loop, don't output anything <laughs> as you are, um, you know, iterating over this, this set of code. Um, so we do in, and then we're going to do one, our closed range operator, and then we're going to do exponent. So we're going to do one to whatever the value of that exponent is. Then I'm going to do a brackets. We're going to put answer 
times equals the base. So basically, the answer is going to be times by the base. So it's going to add this. Um, I'm just, if you haven't covered this, um, you know, go jump in back into the literature and it explains how to do calculations. Uh, so basically, it's this answer equals answer times base. So it's just a really simplified version of, of this calculation here. All right, I'm going to delete that. <clears throat> okay, so um, we let's do the calculation. You see it has done it twice, which is awesome. We don't have an error or anything, but we don't know what the answer is. Well, we need to output it. So we're going to do print, and then we're going to do the... Um, actually, we're going to do so just a string interpolation. We're going to have the base. And let's do the caret key. So basically, it's to the power of, and then we're going to do a string interpolation again. Exponent is, and then we're going to output our answer. It should be 25. That's actually correct. So see here is our answer. 5 to the power of 2 is 25. That is absolutely correct. So what's uh, 3? Let's see what happens. It is uh, 125. I believe that is correct. <laughs> that is actually. So here we go. We've, we've created a really small calculation um, for iterating um, over, over powers, which is, or exponents, which is, which is awesome. So um, you see the foreign loop is actually quite powerful and simplistic. Um, but, and I, I'm going to show you one more example um, just to show you how, how awesome it is, in my opinion. All right, so um, we're going to go over Fibonacci numbers. I love Fibonacci numbers. Um, loved math when I was younger. And so anything that deals with math or sequences, it just makes me all warm and fuzzy inside. Brings back memories of, of one of my favorite math professors uh, who said that the dumbest question is the one you don't ask. So if you have questions, ask. You are not dumb. And I actually add a caveat to that where I, <laughs> if the person who you ask a question to assumes that you're dumb for asking that question, they're actually the stupid ones. So there you go. <laughs> all right, so Fibonacci numbers basically um, it's it's a, a sequence of numbers that's found in nature. Um, basically, it kind of explains the arrangement of leaves on stems, uh, fruit sprouts of pineapple, or artichoke, or like the following of artichoke, the uncurling of ferns. And there's so many examples of Fibonacci numbers in nature. So we are actually going to create a calculation that will calculate whatever term, so if you want to calculate the tenth term of a Fibonacci number, or you know you want to get, you know, you want you want to go ten terms deep, it will output the numbers, you know, going to the tenth term, which is pretty awesome. So um, I will actually add some links in regards to Fibonacci numbers if you want to learn more. There's an awesome TED talk that's like seven minutes. That's awesome. Um, but yeah. Or you just, you know, type in Fibonacci number in Google, and it'll tell you, like, everything you want to know. <laughs> All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to uh, basically create this sequence um, for n. Okay, so first of all, we Fibonacci numbers, um, the sequence goes like this. So you start out with zero, and then... One, oh, and then uh, one, and then two, then three, and five, then eight, and then thirteen, then twenty-one, and then except twenty-one of thirty-four. Sorry. Okay. So if. If you can see the sequence, basically what it is, how it calculates the next 
number is um, you add the two prior to it. So 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 plus 2, 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, 2, oopsie, don't do that, uh, 2 plus 3 is 5, and so on and so forth. So basically we want to output this, um, and this will actually probably calculate quite a bit. Um, it's actually quite simple, but uh, getting the logic can be a little... A little fun. All right, so what we need is we need to create a variable for the starting number. And with Fibonacci numbers, it all, all the numbers are integers, period. Okay? So we're going to set all of our variables to zero, and they're going to be integers. So far, then we need the starting number. We need the previous number, because we need to calculate um, the new number based off the starting number and the previous number. I'm going to equal that to zero. And then again, I mentioned new number. So the new number is going to be an int as well. I'm going to set everything again to zero. So we want to just zero everything out. And then I, I think that's it. Yeah. Okay. So then um, we need a variable for the nth term. And when we enter the nth term, that will provide um, the end range for our for in loop. Okay, so I'm going to just type in nth term. And that's also going to be an integer. And at, at this point, we're just going to set it for zero so that we can see this math as we go. Okay, so um, I'm going to do a print statement because we have a lot of calculations in our con or um, in our debugging area error, uh, debugging area. <laughs> um, so I want this to be really clear that this output is for the Fibonacci numbers. Fibonacci numbers, and then we are going to say the sequence below is to the, and then we're going to add our string interpolation and bring in our nth term variable and then term and then colon so that when it outputs it'll see you see down here print prints out what the thing is going to be or it's like an intro. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and get started with the calculations. So I'm going to do for loop, and I'm going to use underscore because I don't need to know, I don't need to see the output for each you know, number in the range. So we do in, and then we start at one, and then we go to nth term. So we use the variable nth term to end it. Our brackets. And so basically math is really simple. We are basically going to have a new number which equals the starting number um, plus the previous number. So as you see above, it's, it's exactly what it's, it's, it is. It's just basic math in that sense. Okay, um, but we have a problem here um, because it's obviously not calculating. Fatal error. Cannot perform range with end less than start. So let's go ahead and just give it one. <laughs> okay, of course nothing outputted. So um, next thing we need to do is when it goes through once, we need to set the previous number, number equal to the starting number so that the next time it goes through the sequence again, Starting number will be updated, or the previous number will be updated. Okay, and then we're going to print out the new number because so we just created it, so we want to see what it is. Okay, so we have zero, which is right. Um, let's do five. All right, so we have nothing but zero. See, that's not good. So what we're going to do here is some logic. So if 
the new number is equal to one. We want to print um, new number again. And this is only with one. Um, the sequence is accurate. The thing is, is with one, it needs to output twice in order for you to do the math. Um, but it is accurate. That's that's like a bug that I was stumbling on for a while when trying to work through this. All right, but now we need some more math because it's obviously not going anywhere. And that, that's because we have it given us the starting number. Um, and you haven't incremented the starting number. So let's go ahead and do that. It's basically stuck at zero. <laughs> so if the starting number is equal to zero, what we want to do is, oops, equal to zero, what we want to do is have it add a number, add, add one, so that it can start the sequence. And there we go. So you have one, one, and the first one is print new number, and the second one is if new number equals one, which is true. So that's why I'm saying I, I printed out both. But if you look, if you want to look it up, this um, code does output correctly as far as the nth terms. All right, so obviously it's not working because it stops at two. So we need some more logic. So let's do an else statement. So if the number is not zero, then it should do the following, which is the starting number should equal the new number. And now it should output correctly. And there it goes, it does. Um, let's go ahead and test this with uh, um, the tenth term. Sure enough, we got 10 terms here. Okay, so yeah, so, yep, 10 terms. So there we go, that's the logic for a Fibonacci number. Fibonacci sequence, I should say. So there, I mean, see so we used a for in loop. We used if statements <laughs> to basically do this calculation. So um, it's kind of what I, what I want to show you is that you know it's with just for and if we can you know calculate nature <laughs> you know math and whatnot. Okay, so let's move on. So the next thing I want to cover is um, oh so the sequence here. I just want to make this kind of clear that yes you can use. Um, a underscore if you don't need the value um, from from a sequence. So yeah, you don't at all. You do not need the value if that's if all you want is the answer. So that's pretty nifty. All right, so I want to go over um, iterating over array with for in as well as dictionary. And if you haven't. All right, if, if you don't know what an array is or you haven't practiced with it, go ahead and, out, go ahead and check out my video for array and dictionary. I'm not going to go over how to do this, <laughs> how to create an array or anything like that. I'm just going to show you how to iterate over one as well as dictionary. So, Okay, so uh, let's create an array. I'm going to make it a constant. And it's just going to be a list of names. So um, let's do Joe, Mike, uh, Billy, and Sue Ellen. And I actually do have a friend whose name is Sue Ellen. <laughs> All right. So how do we output um, or iterate over each value in, in an array? So basically do four, and then um, just create name and name array. And what this will do is it'll output for each item in the array. So uh, let's have it output hello there name. 
and should output yes. As you see, it does output hello there, which is awesome. Okay, so that's how you iterate over an array. Now, how do you do this for a dictionary? Uh, kind of the same way, a little different. So um, let's do a dictionary with animals and how many legs they have. So let's create a dictionary constant num number of legs and equals and then we're going to do <coughs> our key which will be the names of the animals so spider colon and then the number of legs and then do dog colon four legs uh, beetle equals uh, then six legs and last but not least, we do house centipede. I chose house centipede because it has like, most of them have th uh, 15 segments of legs, which is pretty cool. <laughs> so I thought, ow, let's do an animal that has like multiple legs. All right, so we basically create a four. And then what we do is we bring in the key and the value. So the key is an animal and then the value is the leg count and then we do n and then that's in the dictionary number of legs and then brackets and so here we can output print um, a and then we'll do our string interpolation of animal has Interpolation, leg count, legs, period. I should output. Oh, did I do wrong? Oh, I think I did something wrong, but I'm not sure what exactly I did. Let's look at our little error message. Expected a blah in blah. Oh, see. My little error right here, I did equals. It's not supposed to be that, it's supposed to be equal one. Yeah, see, sometimes I make mistakes. Actually, in some of my videos, you'll see I make a couple of mistakes, but I do try to correct them. Um, all right, so it should output, and it does. A house centipede has three legs, a spider has eight legs, and a dog has four legs, which is absolutely correct. So let's have a little fun here. I actually want to do an if statement here, and just to point out that uh, the leg count for an animal that's like over over eight is just awesome. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, oops, I'm going to copy uh, this print statement because I don't want to type anymore. I just want to add to it. And just do that. It's amazing. Right. And so when the house centipede flows through, um, oh, I said less than, <laughs> I want to say greater than, and then it should say the house, house centipede has 30 legs. That's amazing. And then it outputs house centipede has 30 and blah, blah, blah. But say if I don't want it to output twice for house centipede, I just do an else statement. And we'll just bring this guy up here. And so it'll output just the spider, dog, and beetle, whereas the house centipede has a special little message. So there you go, that's iterating over a dictionary. So it's pretty nifty, a little bit different um, than an array or even any of our other four loops prior, because an array, it looks really similar to what we did up here, the four index. Really, really similar. Um, and then dictionary is actually quite different because you have to bring in the key and the value. And you can work with either or um, once you get in there. All right, so I also wanted to really quickly cover for loops in a traditional C variety sense um, in which a for loop has, it's not four and it's just four, okay? 
where it has a variable, a condition, and an incrementer. So it will go through the loop x number of times, period. Okay. Um, all right, so let's go, set, go ahead and get started. We'll do a for loop. And then we're going to create a variable here that will um, basically, uh, it's a variable for incrementing. Uh, and you can actually use the variable in inside the for construct, or the code block, I should say. So um, let's go ahead and have it equal to zero. And then we'll do a semicolon, and then we'll do our condition. It's five, semicolon, and then we increment. So plus plus i. All right, so now we have our for loop. And let's go ahead and just print out something where we're going to see how many times it outputs. Hi, I have gone through this for loop, and we'll do um, bracket i number of times. Okay, so we see it does go through five times, but the number count is not what we typically, it's in computer speech where numbers start at zero, which is absolutely correct. <laughs> but let's let this make this a little bit readable, so let's go ahead and add one to it which is true, it's gone through it five times. So there you go, there's a traditional for loop with the variable, condition, and incrementer. Um, these are really awesome. I, I've used them, I still use them. So uh, I just wanted to show you that, you, yes, you can use them in Swift as well. All right, so we, we covered quite a bit. Um, and actually it's only two for for loop, four and then four in. So I hope that's helped you. Um, but yeah, that's the end of control flow, you know, loops, while loops, for loops, whatnot. Um, you can do a lot of powerful things with loops and conditional statements. So, all right, code on, my friends.